Hello, dear learners, welcome to the massive open online course on Swayam in Psychology. I am Gurjeet Kaur from DAV Public School, Vasant Kunj, Delhi. Welcome to a joyful learning of fundamentals of psychology. In the upcoming modules here, today we will discuss variations in psychological attributes. In this module, we will cover the following topics individual differences in human functioning, assessment of psychological attributes, aptitude, nature and measurement, creativity and the objectives of this module are 1. To understand psychological attributes on which people differ, 2. To learn about different methods that are used to assess these attributes and 3. To know more about aptitude and creativity. If you observe your friends, classmates or relatives, you will find how they differ from each other in the manner they perceive, learn and think as also in their performance on various tasks. Such individual differences can be noticed in our every walk of life. That people differ from one another is quite obvious. Isn't it students? In class 11, you have learnt about psychological principles that are applied to understand human behaviour. We also need to know how people differ, what brings about these differences and how such differences can be assessed. You will recall how one of the main concerns of modern psychology has been the study of individual differences from the time of Galton. This chapter will therefore introduce you to the fundamentals of in individual differences. One of the most popular psychological attributes which has been of interest to psychologists is intelligence. People differ from each other in their ability to understand complex ideas, adapt to environment, learn from experience engage in various forms of reasoning and to overcome obstacles. In this chapter, you will study the nature of intelligence, changing definitions of intelligence, cultural differences in intelligence, range and variations in the intellectual competencies of people and the nature of special abilities or aptitudes. Students. No two individuals, not even identical twins, are exactly the same. Besides, looking different, their behaviour also varies. Psychologists want to know why and how do these differences come about. Francis Galton established the principle that all human traits differ over a wide range, from small to large, weak to very strong, slow to fast, and which happens for height, weight and various kinds of psychological attributes, including as we know the ability to learn, think, perceive, reason etc. Now we will try to understand individual differences in human functioning. Individual variations are common within and across all the species, variability in fact is a fact of nature and individuals are no exception to this. They vary in terms of physical characteristics such as height, weight, strength, hair colour and so on. They also vary along psychological dimensions. They may be intelligent or dull, dominant or submissive, creative or not so creative, outgoing or withdrawn etc. The list of these variations is endless. Different traits can exist students in varying degrees in an individual. So in this sense, each one of us is unique as he or she exemplifies a typical combinations of various traits. The question which you may like to pose is how and why people differ. This in fact, is the subject matter of the study of individual differences. For psychologists, individual differences refer to distinctiveness and variations amongst people's characteristics 
and behavior patterns. For example, two people may differ in terms of sense of smell, color vision and many other traits and abilities. Many psychologists believe that our behaviors are influenced by our personal traits. Some others hold the view that our behaviors are influenced more by the situational factors. This latter view is known as situationism, which states that situations and circumstances in which we, a person, is placed influences one's behavior. For example, a person who is generally aggressive may behave in a very submissive manner in the presence of his or her top boss. And another example would be that an individual may act in a very helpful manner even if he does not wish to be helpful, if he knows that people are watching his behavior. Sometimes the situational influences are so overpowering that individuals with differing personality traits respond to them in almost the same way. The situationist perspective views human behavior relatively more as a result of influence of all the external factors. Assessment of psychological attributes all psychological attributes are involved in a very simple phenomena like in time taken to react to a stimulus that is reaction time and also in highly global concepts like happiness. It is difficult to count and specify the number of psychological attributes that can be assessed. In the testing that is psychological testing in its modern form originated more than about 100 years ago in laboratory studies of sensory discrimination, motor skills and reaction time. Assessment refers to measurement or evaluation of psychological attributes of an individual and this evaluation often using multiple methods in terms of standards of comparison. Any attribute will be said to exist in a person only if it can be measured using scientific procedures. The assessment of human characteristics involve observations, interviews, checklists, inventories, projectives and other psychological tests. For example, when we say Harish is dominant, we are referring to the degree of dominance in him. This statement is based on our own assessment of dominance in him. Once assessment is done, we can use this information to predict how Harish will probably behave in future. Our assessment may be formal or informal. Formal assessment is objective, standardized and organized, whereas informal assessment is open to subjective interpretations. Moreover, psychologists are trained in making formal assessments but informal assessment varies from case to case and from one assessor to a, another assessor. The attribute chosen for assessment depends upon our purpose. For example, in order to help a weak student perform well in examination, we may assess his or her intellectual strengths and weaknesses. If a person fails to adjust with members of his or her family, and neighborhood, we may consider assessing his or her personality characteristics. For a poorly motivated person, we may assess his or her interests and preferences. Psychological assessment uses systematic testing procedures to evaluate abilities, behaviors and personal qualities of individuals. Psychological attributes are not linear or unidimensional. They are complex and expressed in terms of dimensions. A line is a mere aggregate of many points. A point occupies no space, but think of a box. It occupies space. It can be described only in terms of its three dimensions, that is length, breadth and the height that a box has. Similar is the case with psychological attributes 
They are usually multidimensional. Some of the important attributes that are of interest to psychologists are intelligence, aptitude, interest, personality and values. So now, we will learn more about each of these attributes. Intelligence. Intelligence is the global capacity to understand the world, think rationally and use all the resources effectively when faced with challenges. Intelligence tests provide a global measure of a person's general cognitive competence including the ability to profit from schooling. Generally, students having low intelligence are not likely to do so well in school related examinations, but their success in life students is not associated only with their intelligence test scores. Example of intelligence tests, Weschler adult intelligence test. Aptitude, it refers to an individual's underlying potential for acquiring skills. Aptitude tests are used to predict what an individual will be able to do if given proper environment and training. Example, a person with high language aptitude can be trained to be a good writer. Examples of aptitude tests, differential aptitude test, DAT, general aptitude test battery, GATB. Now students, we will learn more about another attribute of human personality which is interest. Interest is an individual's preference for engaging in one or more specific activities relative to others. Assessment of interest of students helps to decide what subjects or courses they can pursue and with pursue with comfort and with ease. Knowledge of interest helps us in making choices that promote life satisfaction and performance on jobs. Examples of interest assessments are strong interest inventory, Jackson uh, vocational interest survey, JVIS and now we will try to understand the concept of personality. Personality is a relatively enduring characteristic of a person that makes him or her distinct from others. Personality tests try to assess an individual's unique characteristics, whether one is dominant, submissive, moody, emotionally stable, outgoing, withdrawn, etc. Personality assessment helps us to explain an individual's behavior and predict how she or he will behave in future. Example of personality tests, Myers-Briggs type indicator, MBTI. Another attribute of interest is values. Values are enduring beliefs about an ideal mode of behavior. A person having a value sets a standard for guiding his or her actions in life and also for judging others. In value assessment, the dominant values of a person like political, religious, social or economic are determined. The various assessment methods. Several methods are used for psychological assessments. You have learnt about some of these in class 11. Let us recall their key features. Psychological test. A psychological test is an objective and standardized measure of an individual's mental and behavioral characteristics. Objective tests have been developed to measure all the dimensions of psychological attributes example intelligence, interest, aptitude, etc. These have been described above. These tests are widely used for the purposes of clinical diagnosis, guidance, personal selection, placement and training. Besides objective tests, psychologists have also developed certain projective tests, especially for the assessment of personality. Interview is another method of assessment. It involves seeking information from a person on one-to-one -one basis. You may see it being used when a counsellor interacts with a client. A salesperson makes a door-to-door -door survey regarding the usefulness of a particular product. 
an employer selects employees for his or her organization or a journalist interviews important people on issues of national and international importance. Another method which is of utmost importance is case study. Case study is an in-depth study of the individual in terms of his or her psychological attributes and the psychological history in the context of his or her psychosocial and physical environment. Case studies are widely used by clinical psychologists. Case analysis of the lives of great people can also be highly illuminating for those willing to learn more of their life experiences. Case studies are based on data generated by different methods over a period of time. These methods are interview, observation, questionnaire, psychological tests, etc. Another method, observations. Observation involves employing systematic, organized and objective procedures to record behavioral phenomena occurring naturally in real time. Certain phenomena such as mother-child interactions can be easily studied through observation. The major problems with observational methods are that the observer has little control over the situation and the reports may suffer from subjective interpretation of the observer. Self-report is a method used whereby a person provides factual information about himself, herself, his or her opinions, beliefs and ideas that she or he holds. Such information may be obtained by using an interview schedule or a questionnaire or a test or even a personal diary. Let us now focus on the special abilities present in a person. Aptitude is one of them. Aptitude refers to a special ability in a person in a particular field of activity and it is a combination of characteristics that indicates an individual's capacity to acquire some specific knowledge or skill after training. The knowledge of aptitude can help to predict an individual's future performance. Many aptitude tests have been constructed in pursuit to measure the skills required for certain kinds of jobs and occupations. Example, manual dexterity involved in factory jobs. Aptitude tests are available in two forms. First is the independent aptitude test, also the, known as specialized tests, which includes clerical, mechanical, numerical and typing aptitude test. The other one, the generalized or the multiple aptitude tests, exist in the form of test batteries. That is a combination of tests which measures aptitude in several separate but homogeneous areas. Differential aptitude test, DAT, general aptitude test batteries, GATB and the armed services vocational aptitude batteries, ASVAB. DAT is most commonly used in educational settings. It consists of eight independent sub-tests, verbal reasoning, numerical reasoning, abstract reasoning, clerical speed and accuracy, mechanical reasoning, space relations, spellings, language use. Another Indian adaptation of DAT has been developed by J. M. Oja. Several other aptitude tests have been developed in India for measuring scientific, scholastic, literary, clerical and teaching aptitude. In order to be successful in a particular field, a person must have both aptitude and interest. I hope that you find the concept and study of aptitude quite interesting. Now we will build our understanding of the concept of interest. Interest is a preference for particular activity and aptitude is the potentiality to perform that activity. A person may be interested in a particular job or activity but may not have the aptitude for it. 
Similarly, a person may have the potentiality to perform a job but may not be interested in doing that at all. In both cases, the outcome will not be satisfactory. A student with high mechanical aptitude and strong interest in engineering is more likely to be a successful mechanical engineer. Another phenomena of interest to psychologists is that of creativity. Creativity is defined as the ability to produce ideas, objects or problem solutions that are novel, appropriate and useful. Creativity is something that is both original and worthwhile. This something could take many forms. It might be a dance piece, a chemical process, a story, a poem, a painting or even a theory. There is the general consensus that creative people show creative productivity, new inventions, insightful discoveries, artistic work and other products are all original and worthwhile. To name a few of creative people would include names like Albert Einstein, C. V. Raman, Tagore, Ramanujan, Leonardo da Vinci, Thomas Edison, Sigmund Freud and many more who have made outstanding contribution in different fields. In recent years, understanding of creativity has broadened. Creativity is not just limited to the selected few, the artist, the poet or the inventor. Ordinary individuals in simple occupations in pottery, cooking, carpentry, etc. can also be very creative. However, it has been said that we are not working at the same level of creativity as an eminent scientist or a writer. That means an individual varies in terms of the level and the areas in which they exhibit creativity and that all may not be operating at the same level. Einstein's theory of relativity is a classic example of the highest level of creativity which implies bringing out altogether new ideas, facts, theory or a product. Another level of creativity is working on what has already been established earlier by way of modifications, by putting things in newer perspectives or to new use. Research literature widely suggests that children begin to develop the imagination during the early years of childhood but they ex express creativity mostly through physical activities and in non-verbal ways. When language and intellectual functions are fully developed and store of knowledge is adequately available, creativity is fully expressed through verbal modes too. Those who are outstanding in their creativity may give an indication about the direction in which their creativity lies through their self-chosen activities. In some cases, however, opportunities need to be provided before they can manifest their hidden potential for creativity. Is there any explanation for variation in potential creativity? Yes, as in the case of other mental and physical characteristics, Variations can be attributed to the complex interaction of heredity and environment. Creativity is also determined by both these factors. Limits of the creative potential are set by heredity and the environment factors like motivation, commitment, family support, peer influences, training and other opportunities do stimulate the development of creativity. Although no amount of training can transform an average person to the level of Einstein or Shakespeare, but it is also true that every individual can raise their creative potential beyond its present level. Now we will try to understand the tips to enhance creativity. For fostering creativity, a number of general skills and abilities basic to creative thinking and problem solving have been identified. Some of the strategies and materials that can be used 
to foster creative thinking in our children, that is you, are sensitivity training, providing opportunities to think in unique ways, observation, making children observe different things around them and making them know about their observations, classification or even categorizing objects in different kinds in one class, story writing, to give children a beginning of the story and asking them to complete it in their own ways using their own imagination and diverse thoughts. Multiple uses, asking children to think of different ways of using a common object. Let us now compare creativity and intelligence. Creativity as we all know is a new and novel way of thinking and the novel ideas of learning and doing things, whereas intelligence is the global capacity to understand the world, to think rationally, effectively and act effectively when faced with challenges. The following are the two viewpoints regarding the relationship of creativity and intelligence. Intelligence by itself does not ensure creativity. Terman in 1920 found that persons with high IQ were not necessarily creative. Researchers have also found that both high and low level of creativity can be found in highly intelligent children and also children of average intelligence. Thus, the same person can be creative as well as intelligence. But it is not necessary that intelligence ones must be creative. Secondly, relationship between creativity and intelligence is positive. All creative acts require some minimum ability to acquire knowledge and capacity to comprehend, retain, store and retrieve. Recall, for example, creative writers need facility in dealing with language. Artists must understand the effect that will be produced by a painting. Hence, a certain level of intelligence is required for creativity. We will now try to understand the difference between creativity tests and intelligence tests. Creativity tests are open-ended and involve divergent thinking. They permit a person to think of different answers to the questions in terms of their experiences, whereas intelligence tests are close-ended as they involve convergent thinking. The person has to think of the right solution to the problem. There are no specified answers to questions in creativity tests. There is freedom to use one's own imagination, whereas in intelligence tests, Focus is on abilities such as memory, logical reasoning, accuracy, perceptual ability and clear thinking. Creativity tests have been developed using different stimuli like words, figures, actions and sounds. There is little scope for spontaneity, originality and imagination in intelligence tests. Famous psychologists who developed creativity tests are Guilford and Torrance and the psychologists who developed intelligence tests are Binet and Weschler. To summarize what we have learned today, I would like to state that individuals vary in their physical and psychological characteristics. A wide variety of personal attributes such as intelligence, aptitude, interest, personality and values can be assessed. Psychologists assess these attributes through psychological tests, interviews, case studies, observations and self-reports. Aptitude refers to an individual's potential for acquiring some specific skills. Aptitude tests predict what an individual will be able to do given proper training and environment. Creativity is the ability to produce novel ideas, objects or problem solutions that are novel, appropriate and useful. 
certain level of intelligence is necessary to be creative, but a high level of intelligence however does not ensure that a person would be highly creative. Dear students, we will continue to know more about intelligence and its theories in our next module. Thank you.